Now, before we begin, I just want to point out that this is going to be a spoiler-free review, and I will be doing a either a spoiler review or a spoiler talk or a spoiler stream, something spoilery related later on down the line. I'm not sure just quite yet. Maybe you guys can help me out in the comments section to figure out what we should do about it. And on with the show. <laughs> Hey there guys, oh, welcome back to another awesome video, it's time for another movie review and today's movie review is going to be of Black Panther Wakanda Forever. So Black Panther Wakanda Forever is the sequel to Black Panther and after, them, after mourning the death of their king T'Challa, the people of Wakanda including Queen Ramana and Shuri have to thrive and adapt and progress after their loss as a new threat known as Namor is on the horizon. So this is once again directed by Ryan Coogler and Ryan Coogler comes back with us with this sequel, this beautiful sequel here. And I really want to give, like, I know I've said this before and I'll say it again, I want to give my full respect, my full condolences, my full just, like, gratitude and everything to this cast and to this whole the people basically behind this production, including Ryan Coogler and everyone else involved, because this they were given a hard task to do, and that is to continue the franchise of the Black Panther, but obviously without Chadwick Boseman. And one thing I'm definitely going to mention that is very even makes this even more unfortunate, makes this even more of a task, is that Ryan Coogler already before he made this version of Wakanda Forever, he already had a script years ago for Black Panther 2 and he had called Chadwick Boseman if he wanted to read the script and Chadwick said that he was too tired and that was literally the last conversation they had. So this really just means just so much that they were able to push through and basically they're going through what we're going through and what we're going through is what they're going through. So. I give them so much respect for pulling this off and I think this was really an excellent film. This is so beautiful visually and storytelling wise. I think this was such a beautiful way to end the phase because this is the final film in phase four because next year we go right into phase five with Quantum Mania. So I think this was such a really perfect cap on things. And to kind of like go into a little bit on phase four is that this movie to me after seeing this film really proved to me that I'm starting to notice and agree that I feel that phase four has kind of been a very much like a coping phase because of so much loss that several characters face in the MCU in phase four. And this one is just icing on the cake. Now I'm going to get this out of the way and just point out that everyone is obviously giving a phenomenal job here and it's because that it's so genuine to the heart and the best part about this is that the acting doesn't detriment the characters because we can both see that it's both in like it's in it's seamless of how is it the character that's mourning for their king or is it the actor or actress that is mourning for their beloved friend and like there's no like like it's seamless like it's so like obviously it's both relatable but it's seamless how the acting is it's seamless how well it comes off of every character or, and every actor and actress in this film but i think the ones that stand out to me the most in terms of the performances is in terms of everyone that's just dealing and coping with this is definitely hands down Angela Bassett is really just giving it her all in this so powerful she leaves a presence in this film from beginning to end she leaves such just gravitas and then there's Letitia Wright and I didn't really think of this until later on but how much she has to do in this film is so like like almost awe-inspiring a little bit it's like just incredible and just remarkable what she has to do as an actress because she's lost her friend, her beloved friend and her beloved co-star. 
And the fact that uh, you look at Shuri as a character, that she kind of went from being like a side character a little bit, kind of sort of in the MCU, like we saw her, like obviously she was in the first Black Panther, but we saw her a little bit as a side character here and there and things like Infinity War and in Endgame. But now here is Shuri now going from a, like a side character to now, she's now the main lead. Like just so much is on her shoulders, the weight she has to carry and lift up. And I can definitely feel she's definitely borrowing we're getting a lot of inspiration from Chadwick Boseman, of course. How emotional she is on the inside. Everyone is giving their all here. Winston Duke, Lupita Nyong'o, the Dora Milaje, even Dominique Thorne as Riri Williams. Which also, I actually didn't mind Riri Williams in this movie. Everyone's really just giving 110% and I cannot stress that enough. However, let's talk about a real huge highlight of this movie and that is Namor. I really loved what the actor did with this character and I really don't know how to say the dude's name so I'm not gonna try and butcher it. I apologize. I know it's like Tanakh something. Not the point. Namor is also remarkable. He is also incredible it, and he really shows how much he, of a powerhouse he is as a threat. But you also see why he's a threat because his ideology, his intentions are very similar to Wakanda. He's just going at a different approach. And without giving away exactly why he's doing this, he has his reasons and they're very much a tough subject, but at the same time, a very relatable subject. I gotta say, this movie definitely got a lot darker than the first film. And I respect that. I respect when a sequel can be darker than the original. Because that's kind of like, not the intention, but that's kind of like... A good thing to say when you have a sequel that kind of goes darker than the first film because a lot of sequels do that and I say that with great compliments about this film because yeah a lot of sequels do do that hey we're gonna go darker than the original I mean you look at like things like a new hope you look at then you look at Empire Shakes Back Alien then you got Aliens Terminator, then T2 Judgment Day, just to name a few. So I definitely would say Wakanda Forever is in that category because I did not expect it to kind of get that intense, this intense, this dark. It's not like super dark, but there are some really intense moments that I thought this was getting a little brutal and I like that. And of course, the tribute and honor this movie does for both T'Challa and Chadwick Boseman, both the legacies that they have left for us and left for them in order to carry on for Chadwick Boseman. If there was one thing I could say about the movie that kind of maybe was a small minor nitpick that I really wasn't too crazy about was I'm very 50-50 on the runtime. Like I don't mind that it's like two hours and like 40 something minutes, but I feel like this movie could have maybe just been trimmed down just a little bit, but that's hard to say because there's so much going on in this movie that it all revolves around the plot. So even like small little scenes, like there's like a subplot with Martin Freeman and a few other characters that we've seen before or introduced. And like even that is very much, much detriment to the plot. But like if they can just have trimmed some of those scenes down, like some of the slower burn moments, not that the slower burn moments were boring, they weren't boring at all. It's just, I feel like some of the scenes with Martin Freeman and maybe some of those plots with uh, the government and there's this whole other thing with all these legislative people involved that are wondering about Wakanda and their technology and their resources. I feel like some of those scenes might have been, could have been trimmed just a tiny bit like better or a little more like less. But overall, I am going to give Black Panther Wakanda Forever, I'm going to give it a solid A. So Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Have you guys seen it? What did you think of it? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please smash the like button. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe and do awesome videos every day if not a week. Make sure you ring that bell, do new videos every day if not a week. Share the video with family and friends, all that good stuff and more. Leave any suggestions you have in the comments. You name it, I'll look into it as soon as possible, as best as possible. Look out for more reviews. I'm going to see if I can maybe do some gaming. 
I'm going to try and do some top 10 stuff because I want to do some top 10s. I got a bunch of top 10 ideas and I hopefully I can squeeze them in soon or so. We'll see what happens. I'm starting to do vlogs again. You guys can go check those out as well, along with other stuff that will be happening in between these videos, whether it's streams, TV show reviews, whatever else I throw in or whatever else you guys suggest, a q and I'm still working on that Q&A video. Also, the other ideas that we're going to have coming into the rest of this year, into next year, and so on. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.